In today's class, we flipped two coins, and we did this, each person did this six times, we tallied the results, um, and we found <coughs> that um, people got two heads a total of 18 times, two tails a total of 21 times, and one of each a total of 31 times. So this is a result of one experiment that we did. We observed that this number seems to stick out compared to these two numbers. These two numbers are not too much different, but this one is a lot different. This seems to indicate that getting one of each is more likely than getting either two heads or two tails. We repeated the experiment using everybody using two different coins and listing the number, the, the heads and tails in the same order for the, uh, each pair of coins. Okay, so um, for example, if you had a penny and a dime, uh, that might be the penny and that might be the dime. So that a penny getting heads and a dime getting tails would be different than a penny getting tails and a dime getting heads. When we tallied these results, this is what we got. Okay, we uh, counted uh, 21 occurrences of heads, tails, 18 of tails, heads, to go with 18 of heads, heads, and 14 of tails, tails. And we observed that these outcomes appeared to be equally likely, uh, or at least were plausibly equally likely. It's not plausible that it's not very plausible, it's not entirely impossible that by random chance, by statistical fluctuation, uh, the one of each could come out with a much higher result, even though it was as likely as either of the other two. The point, though, is that in this case, uh, at least for this experiment, it's more likely that uh, each of these occurrences, the heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, are in fact equally likely. We could do a more extensive experiment. Everybody flip the coins a hundred times, take some real precautions to make sure that everybody recorded the data uh, carefully and correctly, uh, but that would take practice, would take a large group, would take a lot of time, and it's not really necessary. Um, but if we got relatively equal numbers for these four occurrences, heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, with that many, uh, 12 people doing 100 repetitions each time. Uh, if we got pretty equally likely numbers here, 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 and here, pretty equal numbers here, 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 and here, then we would conclude that it's pretty likely that each of these four occurrences is equally likely, whereas the one of each uh, would not be. And of course, we also observe that one of each corresponds to the heads, tails, tails, heads. Uh, to the sum of these two. This is a one of each, this is one of each. If these are equally likely, then one of each is not equally likely. Uh, if these are equally likely to the heads, heads, or tails, tails, if all four of these are equally likely, then this one certainly can't be equally likely.